Welcome to the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. I'm Brian. And I'm Carrie. And this podcast is dedicated to making things simple and easy for you in the kitchen. Carrie Brown is a classically trained, world-class chef who has a passion for creating ketogenic recipes that taste better than anything you've ever experienced. But more than that, she loves teaching people how to cook the right way. And each week on this podcast, Brian and I discuss all the ways you can create awesome keto food that is guaranteed to make you a rock star in the kitchen. If you'd like to learn more about Keto Evangelist Kitchen, you can go to KetoEvangelistKitchen.com and sign up for the newsletter. In exchange for your email address, you'll get brand new recipes delivered to your inbox, ready for you to whip up in the kitchen and enjoy with your friends and family. So sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh and learn. You're about to enter the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. And hello again, everybody. Hey, this everybody. is the Keto Evangelist Kitchen. I'm Brian, and she's, she's Brian. Carrie. Hello. And you can hear me echoing in her microphone background. Uh, how are you today, Carrie? Carrie Brown, CB. Carrie I B. am. Um, I, I'm. I'm swell, actually, and and I wanted to issue a, a public service announcement before oh. we start. Okay. Brian is in a very a particularly sassy mood today, I don't, lovely people. I don't know if that's true. I don't know. I, yeah, we'll see. But mm-hmm, unless you've switched off the sassy switch, he's full on today. Uh, Buckle for, up, I, lovely people. I would, I would argue that I am even keeled in the sassiness department every day. I am equally sassy. Um, you don't even know what even keeled is. It has something to do with boats. I, that's all I know. You're a boat? Apparently. I'm a sassy boat. Oh, Dibs You're Dibs on the band name Sassy Boat. S- nailed it. <laughs> all right. So, good start. Hey, um, so everyone... Want- if, you, if you don't like laughing, turn this podcast off right now because... The- <laughs> Because I think there's going to be a lot of giggling. Ugh, you're in for I just a, have a hunch. You're in for a wild ride, kid. Um, so what is... The, you're going to think this is a stupid question, but that, what else is new? What is the lowest you... What is the lowest register you can make your voice? Like how low can you can you make your voice go, Carrie? Very... No, not very low. That About <laughs> that low. <laughs> about uh, that... Low, a very low, low, low but boy. I can't really talk well. <laughs> you guys should see how she's she's having to contort her whole entire head just to get, just to get her voice that low. Um. All right, so uh, we've got some things. We've got some administrative things to cover today. Woo-hoo! Uh, Let's administer. What are we administering? First things first. Um. We have a Facebook group, if people aren't aware. What's the name of the Facebook group that we have? Strangely enough, it's called Keith Evangelist Kitchen. Oh, that's branding right there. That's what that is. That's good stuff. So, um, And it has become especially awesome this week. This week it's become especially awesome. Why is that? Yes. It, its awesomeness has increased in leaps and bounds. Would you say exponentially? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm going to look up what exponentially means so that I can make sure that we're on the same page. Um, so we have be a Facebook quick. group. It, do what? Be quick. If you're going oh. to look stuff up, be quick. No, oh, oh, then I can't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm notoriously slow. Actually, um, my daughter and I, we drive to ballet whenever I take her. I have to take her to ballet several times a, a week. Uh, and she, she understands that when I'm driving her, the number one rule is don't go slow. That's the number one rule. Like I, I wish that I owned an insurance company so that I could just knock people off the road as I'm driving because they're going way too slow for me. And I wish I could just like bump them out of the way, nice and gentle. Like I don't want to hurt anyone just, but please get out of my way. So thank goodness you don't live in England then. Well, it's different in England because first of all, they're driving on the wrong side of the road first because so there'd be a lot of just head on collisions. Um, cause let's be honest, America. So, uh, what were we talking about before we got into this subject matter? We were talking about the fact that oh. the awesomeness of the keto fan, keto evangelist Facebook 
group has 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 risen a lot this week. It's now super awesome because we have found a way to get rid of to stop all the spammy people and the rude people and Nef- the all the nefarious the, the nefarious all folks. of that. Right. The, not that there were many, but there were enough to make it kind of. Uh, minorly miserable and and now we've we've got rid of them all so now it's just joy and happiness and keto yum and rainbows puppies unicorns and it's like it's fabulous rainbow unicorn uh unfortunately that band name is already taken so i can't call dibs on it so but um if they ever break up i'm getting the name um okay so we have a facebook group called keto evangelist kitchen we're also Keto Van Kitchen on Twitter and Keto Evangelist Kitchen on Instagram. Don't complain to me about Twitter. I realize it's not the full name, but I didn't make the rules on Twitter. They, It's their restriction, not ours. So talk to Twitter about that. But if you can, you want to connect with us there, you can. And I can almost guarantee you that Carrie will answer your questions if you have them. If you tag me. You have to tag me, though. If you tag her. And I don't mean like... Hey, in England, do they have like games like tag? And yes, and is it called tag? Don't remember. Oh, uh, it's been so. Yes, long. tag your it. Tag your it. Yeah, that's a long name. You can't just say tag. Is everything no. proper in England? No, no. In fact, we didn't say tag. We used to just used to say your it. We used to pat people, pat your it, and then run away. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um. I always wanted to know what the it was. I, I was never good at that because it involved people. Most most games do. Most especially yeah, I was like never good at games. Right. I'm I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that the majority of games probably involve people in some way. Yeah, I you I, I was never with the people in the playground doing games. I was um I was to be found on the, the bars doing gymnastic y things on my own. Working on your dismount, <clears throat> yeah, those kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah, that would be me. And then everyone else was over there tagging and yoriting and and running and doing peeply things. That was not me. That I, I can understand that. Or doing handstands against the wall. I was very good at handstands against the wall. Uh, mm-hmm. Was that like a punishment? Go do a handstand nope. against the wall. That was just that was that was your recreation time. I used to really enjoy being upside down. <laughs> there's a lot there um <laughs> but we're gonna move on okay just, what are we moving on to just for the sake of time um so that's our facebook group kid evangelist kitchen join it come over um it's it's apparently gotten much more awesomer so that's good twitter facebook or twitter and instagram you can also follow us and find us and you know see the awesome pictures that carrie makes with her foods and stuff um you can also leave a rating and review in itunes iTunes is the centralized location for all things podcasty, and this is a podcast, in case you didn't know. And if you would be so kind, if you enjoy the show, if you like Carrie, because what's not to like, and you want to tell the world how awesome Carrie is, you should go leave a rating and review about how awesome Carrie is. Yes, I know. I know. Trust me, I read enough reviews to know that that Carrie's the star of the show, and I'm just here... um, because, well, I don't really know, but still, I'm here. Um, so leave a rating and review and tell the world how awesome Carrie is because Carrie is awesome. Speaking of rating and reviews in iTunes, ratings and reviews in iTunes, Carrie Brown, do you have a review that you'd like to read for us today? I have two. <gasps> Dose. Dose reviews. I have two, but I, I do I... Did I want to read? No, I. No, you're being forced to read them. Yes. Okay. Let's be clear mm-hmm. that that Brian is forcing me to read them. I am not doing this willingly. Not because they're not wonderful. They are. No, this is this is completely unwilling on Carrie's part, um, and it's me. It's me making Carrie be uncomfortable because that's what I'm good at. So I'm going to play to my strengths. All right. So what's the first review you've got, Miss Carrie Brown? The first review is from Jimmy Joe S. And Jimmy Joe S. said, fun formative, great info, great fun. I like. And fun. then he said. I like fun formative. That's a good word. 
Isn't that good? Yeah. Transformative! Exclamation point. That's that's transformative. <laughs> so, Jimmy Joe says Brian and Carrie are a great pair and bring us tasty recipes and food insights. And while Brian's humour is usually s- sophomoric, sophomoric, it's it sophomoric. So, 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 so it's strangely enjoyable. That's a first. I, I don't know what to make of that. Sorry. But, and, and then he goes on to say, loaded with information and enjoyably delivered. Well done. Thank you, Jimmy Joe S. Um, I don't Thank know you, what Jimmy to, Joe S. I don't know what to make of the strangely enjoyable part. I'm friggin' wonderful. You don't have to feel strange about enjoying all of this. Just just drink it in, Joe. Drink it in, Jimmy Joe. Come on. You don't have to feel weird. It's okay. I got you, bro. And then there's a long review. Who wrote it? From an uh, from a lovely person called Bitty Bitty Zap. Bitty Bitty now, Zap. Would you like to say that in American? Bitty Bitty Zap. Hap- we happen to know who that is. She is a uh, a well-known uh person her name is Rekka J and she left us a review she did and she entitled it brilliant and then she goes on to say my keto family has come to fully rely on Carrie's recipes a lot of keto blogs are super hit or miss with the recipes but Carrie knows what she's doing and she wants to empower you with knowledge so you know what you're doing Brian not only gives her a great outlet to do this by co-hosting, he plays off Carrie as a great keto knowledgeable, but perhaps kitchen impaired lay person. Thank you, Rekka, for that. I go on. She continues, their conversations are natural, often hysterical and very approachable. Pair this podcast with the amazing recipes available on ketoevangelistkitchen.com and you're going to have a good time. Add in Carrie's recipe cookbooks. I have them all and am salivating in anticipation of future releases and you will have this keto cooking thing in the bag or the crock pot or the cast iron. So, um, clearly, I think that's a pretty indication. That's a pretty good indication that everyone likes you. Is is what I'm saying. That's what I'm hearing. Um, and everyone is entertained by you. <laughs> I guess I'm barely functional, and everyone thinks it's hilarious. This is what I'm taking. Kitchen away. impaired. Yes, I'm apparently. Uh, uh, I'm apparently impaired in numerous ways. So, um, thank you, Rekka, for that. I appreciate it. Um. So there you go. So if you want us to read, if you want to hear your review read in Carrie Brown's uh, brilliant British accent, leave it on iTunes and she will get to it. She will read it and you will enjoy it. It's like having the queen read your review. And I don't mean the queen of England. I mean the band queen reading your review, which is uh, which is a totally different scenario um, entirely. Hey, Carrie Brown. Yes. What are we doing? What is the, the, the topic that we're talking about uh, today? Today's topic is my favorite edible item in the whole wide world. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Your favorite edible item, period, out of all edible items? Yes. Or is it your favorite edible vegetable? Nope. Out of every, out of the set of all things edible, this is your favorite. Yep. And that includes, and I quote, meat. <laughs> yes. Hmm. I'm intrigued. What are, what are we talking about then? Leeks. Ah, uh, yes. Leaks. And and I know that there's there's lots of listeners who were screaming at us while we did that little exchange, going leaks, leaks, it's leaks. We're going to talk about leaks because they know. See, I'm becoming famous for my love of leaks. Um, there are, and I'm proud. I'm proud to say that I have made, I have converted a lot of people to leaks. And I actually, the reason we're doing this episode is because there was um, 
a bunch of people on Facebook last week, and I'm not sure what happened last week, but suddenly there was people pinging me on Facebook all over the place saying various combinations of you're a genius, you're a goddess, leeks are the best thing ever, um, I've died and gone to heaven, leeks, I've never eaten leeks, and now I'm a complete convert, and I've eaten leeks every day, and I'm in love. And so various, there was just lots and lots of leek love. And um, so I decided we should do a podcast on leeks so that those of you who have not yet joined the leek train can do so. I have to say, I appreciate the fact that you didn't say there's a lot of leaky love because that's a completely different podcast. <laughs> oh, I've said it before and I will continue to say it. Anything that anything anything that is labeled leaks probably does isn't that isn't that great of a food. So <clears throat> so let me just Maybe people don't know this. I don't because I can't. I, I lost count the number of times I've taken a handful of leaks to the to the cashier to the checkout, and and they the, the the checkout person has gone, "What is this?" Mm. So that they know what number to they know what to right. look up, and I'm just like, "It's a leak." And and so in case there are people who 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 don't know what a leak is, it's spelled L E E K, not L E A K. Oh. So L E E leak. Uh, okay, so that's a completely different spelling. That makes difference. Yes. That makes a big difference. So yes. you could have leaks on a boat and it wouldn't sink to the ocean, but you couldn't have leaks on a boat because they would sink to the ocean. They would sink right. to the boat. Okay, so so you got to make sure what kind of leaks you actually have if you're a mariner of some kind is really the, the whole point. Yes. Okay. All right, so we're talking about the vegetable of leeks. So why is it that leeks are your favorite food? Of all, of all foods. I, th that I I I I don't know. I guess I just love the. Have you always the loved them? them? I I've always loved them. I've always had a thing about leeks. I've just always loved leeks. So, um, and if you don't know what a leek is, what is a it? Leek? Is a vegetable. Oh, good. And it's a member of the Allium family. And if you've ever seen those enormous flowers that are about three feet tall and they're they're like two feet nine inches of incredibly thin stalk and then they have this huge purple flowery puff thing on the top mm -hmm. that's also a member that's an allium and and so they're related to those um well onions but, onions are also allium right they're in the they're in the allium family too right onions and garlic they are okay. so Garlic, um, chives, what else? There's lots of things, and I like them all. And I've suddenly forgotten what they're all related to. Well, they they're all in the they're all aromatics, right? I mean, they they're all basically of the same kind of in terms of culinary uses. They're they're aromatics. Yes. Okay, so can you explain what an aromatic is to someone who who might not know? Uh, someone who th someone who is functionally incapable in the kitchen like myself <laughs> yes i'm looking at you Reco. <clears throat> <laughs> what <laughs> what uh so what's an aromatic actually to prove that you are not functionally <laughs> inept in the kitchen you describe what a okay oh <laughs> uh, okay so an aromatic when we're talking about um uh for food uh is something that you're going to uh, is a um, it is not a main food source. It is a sort of a flavoring that you're going to use to uh, ex that you use to extract certain um, scents and flavor profiles out of that will complement the main food that you're making. And most of the time, that's done through sautéing uh, the aromatics. So, <clears throat> so onions, garlic, celery. Um, leeks. Uh, there's a couple others that are escaping me right now. Those are the most common aromatics that I can think of. Like you would saute them, and they will they smell up your house. Like that you can smell them from a mile away. That's why they're called aromatics because they're very they have a very strong um, 
odor to them. They have a very strong, uh, strong aroma to them whenever they're being cooked. And, and that aroma is combined into the food that you're making. That's, that is a functionally inept person's definition of aromatics. Well done. <laughs> right. Um, so, so, so leeks. Now, you're going to correct me if I'm wrong here, I'm sure. Um, leeks, Have you ever eaten a leek? I think, I think that my wife made something out of one of your recipe books, out of one of your cookbooks that had leeks in it. I'm pretty sure. And I didn't throw it away. I didn't like take a bite and then just dump it straight on the floor and say, never give this to me again. So, so I think I liked it. I, of course, I don't really remember the whole thing. So yes, I'm going to say that I have and nothing bad came of it. Ginger is another aromatic, by the way. Um, what were we saying? What were we talking about? I don't know, but I think we just... We just made it clear that you're not an authority on leaks. Oh, if that if that was not clear from the beginning, let me alleviate anyone's suspicion. I'm clearly not an expert on leaks. I can identify them in the grocery store, and mostly because they're in the produce section, which I just walk right past. So, so that's how I know where they are. <laughs> I, so I do know what they look like, though. You do? Okay. Yes. So a leek for the uninitiated looks like an enormous, and I mean huge, green onion or spring onion or what's the other name, scallion. American name? Per- scallion. Scallion. So spring onion, green onion, scallion. A leek looks like an enormous, like about an inch and a half round and about 12, 12 to 18 inches long. Mm-hmm. That's what a leak looks like. It's like a scallion on steroids. Yes, but with a totally different flavor profile. Oh, it has a totally different flavor. But if you, if you, if you, that's what you're looking for when when you go and use the leaks. That's what they're like. They're just like enormous scallions. I would recommend onions. that's how you get them. That's how you find them when you walk into the grocery store. Just stand in the produce section and say leaks, and someone will point you in the right direction. That's that is how you find them. I, I have to, and, and I I wish I had it because it was the one day I went into my local Safeway. Um, I, I don't know when it was a year ago, and and the whoever was on the produce department clearly had no idea what a leak was or what to do with it because they'd actually <laughs> they trimmed off all of the part that you used mm. and just had all the. Leaves. The top green yeah. leaf bits that you typically don't use. Right. They bundled those up and put those for sale. They'd actually cut off the entire piece that you use. And right. and I took a picture of it. And because I was just – and, you know, and I, I didn't mean it in a mean way. It was funny to me. But, of course, that just reiterated to me how many people just do not know what a leak is. Well, that would be the equivalent of taking a pomegranate and cutting it open, scooping out the insides, and then eating – the the rind or peeling an orange and then bind then bundling up the the peel and that's what the you're peel selling right to sell yeah, yeah. So, so so that's a good point what is the what is the edible part of the leek or what is the part of the leek that you that you actually use for food because it's not the whole thing right I mean you so can but what's typ- the primary typically you you eat so a, a leek is is a solid white stalk. And it, and it gets progressively greener as you go up the stalk. And then when you get to the top, it kind of fronds out into, into leaves and they're dark green. So it goes from white at the bottom near the root to dark green at the top. And a lot of sites will tell you to only do the white part, but I think that's enormously wasteful. So I have as I, I use as much, you chop the root off with the root, which is obvious you okay I so cut. hold on hold on the root part is when you grab it when you get a fresh leak the root part is going to look like it's got a bunch of hair on it right like the very bottom yes so you, you yep. do not want to use that you want to cut that yep. part off just cut that little bit off if the but hair wasn't I, an indication now you now you know like if don't eat hairy vegetables there we go that's a, generally a good yes. rule of thumb yes all right go that, on that, that's a good rule of thumb <laughs> so i cut as far up 
into the the leek as I can. I don't waste much. And in fact, when I'm making leek soup, I pretty much use the entire thing, not the root. And, and I'll just trim the very, very, you know, the ends of the, the leaves. But I'll use the dark green. I'll use everything, particularly if it's in a leek soup, because you blend it so it's not tough because it's completely blended. Um if you're using leeks for as a side, I won't go completely to the end. I'll stop, but I'll be well into the green before I'll stop using it. And then I'll save all the dark green bits to put to, to make soup with. Okay. So you try to use as much as possible. Yes. Um, now, is there is there is it too bitter the closer you get to the top or is there just a reason is just just the materials not enough there to do anything with no it it tends they just tend to get a bit tougher at the top which is why i'm perfectly fine using it in soup because you blend the living daylights out of it i mean you're busting up any toughness between the cooking and the and the blending um but when you're using so one of my favorite things to do with leeks is to use them instead of noodles because if you when you slice them and you sauté them all the the it's like the the rings in a tree it's just like lots of, of concentric rings and of course they all separate when you sauté them and so it actually looks like tagliatelle tagliatelle that's one i haven't heard in a while <clears throat> and or noodles or what the like ribbony the flat ribbony noodles depending on how thick you slice your leeks Fettuccine. and so the Fettuccine. my favorite way to to do leeks is to have them as like a, a plate of tagliatelle or I'll, I'll add chopped mushrooms and, and, and cream to make. So it's literally like pasta only using leeks in, instead of the, the noodle. And then I'll put meat or meat, whatever on top of that. That's my favorite way to cook leeks. And then I don't go all the way up into the dark green. I'll stop halfway Mm-hmm. And then I'll save the tops, the dark green bits. I'll I'll sling them in the freezer, and then when I've got enough, I'll make soup out of all the tops. Okay. Uh, so clearly, there's now is soup the only thing you can do with them, or because it's because as we discovered, or we, as we discussed earlier, it is an aromatic, so you can do all kinds of stuff with it, right? In fact, one of your favorite things to do is to combine that with a little bit of duck fat. Oh, leeks sautéed in duck fat. I, if I never ate anything else, I for for the rest of my life, I would be entirely happy. Okay, I'm curious about that. Um, okay, so duck fat, yes, it's decadent, but it it's not terrible. I mean, so fat. One of the reasons that fat is so great is because um, it allows for flavors to um, to stick around. Um, but duck fat has a certain flavor profile to it but it's not like it's not like an overwhelming flavor so do you add any particular kinds of flavorings seasonings herbs anything to you know that favorite meal that you've got or is it no just, so it's just it's just duck fat and 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 sauteed leeks and mm-hmm. no salt nothing it depends what mood I'm in. Sometimes I'll add salt. Sometimes I'll add black pepper. Sometimes you, I'll toss other stuff in. You really are. But I'm are. perfectly happy for a plate of leeks sautéed in duck fat. You really are British. You are very British. That is a very, very basic flavor profile. I mean, I'm trying to imagine. That just seems like. That seems very, very plain. Am I wrong or no? I, well, it depends what you mean by plain because when you say plain to me that makes it sound like it's tasteless but this is absolutely no way shape or form tasteless but the taste of the duck fat and the leeks are not covered up by anything else okay so so um, well okay but adding adding herbs wouldn't cover it up would it i mean we're trying to like as i say it depends sometimes i'll add other stuff sometimes i don't it depends what mood i'm in but leeks are very so people understand if you've never had a leek what they taste like leeks are very mild onions, onions. Yeah. They're, they're kind of a cross between a chive and an onion that they, they i mean they have their own flavor but they're 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 very 
gentle. And so they go with a ton of stuff, um, which is why I use them a lot with other things. So I'm going to share a recipe with you in a minute, which is a bacon and leek bake. And it's incredibly simple and it's a few ingredients, but it's just, it's enough. It's just delicious. Okay. Um, okay. But the, 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 the leek doesn't fight because onion can be, onion can kind of fight. Onion can be a bit obnoxious in the strength of its onionness. Leeks aren't like that. Um, okay. So uh, leeks don't fight. That's a uh, dibs on that band name too. Leeks don't fight. Um, so they're much more leaks, mild. Le- leeks are peacemakers. <laughs> blessed are the leeks. Yes, blessed are the leeks. Um, <clears throat> all right. So they're not overwhelming. They're very. They're very mild. They're very um, sophisticated. You have a sophisticated palate. And so, okay. So aside from just having them sauteed in, in, in duck fat, what else would you recommend doing with them? What kind of other stuff would you do with them? Well, hold on. You so, wrote an entire, a whole bunch of soups and you wrote a whole bunch of other stuff. You have a whole bunch of recipes for leeks, right? I have a whole bunch of recipes for leeks, which is kind of why you, you, I would strongly encourage you to, to make friends with the leek because there's going to be a lot of recipes coming with leeks in, um, and one of the reasons why it's so good for adding to stuff is because it's it doesn't it's not a fighter. You, so you can add it. It's a good base. It's a good addition. It's just leeks are just leeks are kind of like the Welsh. They're kind of gentle, <laughs> friendly people, which is probably why they they chose it as their their mm. national emblem. Oh, did they? Did they? They did. Yes. If if you look at a Welsh flag, it's got a leek on it, a leek and a daffodil. <laughs> wow um <clears throat> they're kind of sunshiny happy gentle joyous people leeks and daffodils is that is that the the image that's conjured when you when you mention welsh welshman or welshwoman to to people in in jolly old yes hmm. interesting uh gentle that... happy people okay well then the leak it is so there we go um Okay, so it, it so it's versatile, and it's a complimentary kind of flavor for a lot of stuff. Is there anything in particular that you would not want to do with leeks or add to add add leeks to chocolate? <laughs> right. Uh, okay, chocolate and leeks not a good idea. I haven't. I haven't tried a leek muffin. That's probably a good thing. But I might now. Now I'm thinking about that. You should make a whole bunch of like savory muffin recipes or something. I, I should. You're just I'm just sitting here and now my mind's gone off to savory muffins. But um Yeah, no, I I, I leaks I, I use them a lot because leaks just go with everything. They're just yes. And I'm I, I'm looking at the um up on the nutrition data site and I'm looking at their the quality of their protein, not the amount, but the quality is very high. They have an amino acid score of 96, which is awesome. They have a whole bunch of good vital amines, as vitamins started life being called vital amines. Then they changed it to vitamins because vital amines was a bit of a mouthful. I don't know that they did change it to vitamins. I think they changed it to vitamins. Look, we invented them. <laughs> They're uh, vitamins. Okay, right, fair enough. In 1912, I think it was, when somebody came up, when somebody discovered vital amines, and then they changed that into vitamins. Anyway, so there's the vitamin A, vitamin C. There's a bunch of vitamin K in leeks. There's all sorts of good things. There's folate. There's good stuff. There's some omega-3 fatty acids. There's also some six, but not nearly as many as the omega-3. Um, a small amount of sugars, dietary fiber, um, all good. Leeks are lovely. 
all the way around. Leeks are good. <clears throat> and I have an incredibly low glycemic load of three. So use leeks, not pasta. <laughs> right. Use leeks, not pasta. Um, okay, so tell us a little bit about the recipes that you... Give us an example of one or two of the recipes that you've got uh, for for leaky goodness. So I'm trying to think of all the recipes people have pinged me about and said I'm, I've never eaten leeks and I made this and now I'm a true believer. One of them, I have several recipes in my soups cookbook which has leeks in and the the... Leek and cauliflower soup, because, of course, we don't eat potatoes. The leek and cauliflower soup is incredibly popular, and a lot of people now prefer that to the leek and potato, which is the the classic. Um, So the leek and cauliflower soup is extraordinary. Now, is that that like an equivalent to a vichyssoise? Yes. Okay. Just without the potatoes? Yeah. Okay. Very French of you. He's trying to redeem himself, Rekka. Uh, I, uh, I don't think so. I just, but by, by throwing some fancy French words in, I, I picked a word that started, that sounded French. That was in my memory that I had heard someone use one time and I just tossed it out there. There it is. Right. And it just, well I just had even a blind squirrel can find a nut every once in a while. So. Exactly. Leeks are also very good in, um, quiches. Obviously, we don't have the crust, but again, there's... Oh, actually, yes, in my holiday cookbook, which is full of things that you could eat all year, not just at the holidays, I did these gorgeous little leek mini, like, cocktail quiches, and they actually do have a keto crust. So I know most of the keto and low-carb quiches you see around the internet are crustless, and that that's awesome, and they're awesome, but I miss the the crust, the pastry on a quiche. So for the holiday cookbook, I I got the quiche pastry down. And so there's these cocktail leek quiches in the holiday cookbook, which are just, and I actually ended up just eating a ton of the, of the pastry because it was awesome. Um, leeks in there, very, very good. Mm-hmm. Okay. So a uh, and and also in my sides cookbook, there's a bunch of different ways to use leeks as a side. The recipe I'm going to share today that will also be on the Keto Evangelist Kitchen site if you want pictures and, and exact uh, recipe measurements is a, a main. It's it's like it's it's the main entree with leeks in it rather than leeks as a side or in a soup. Okay. So did you, are you going to, so are we going to go over a specific recipe from, from any of those or? We are, we, we're going to do the bacon and leek bake. Okay. Bacon and leek bake. Let's go. Let's talk about that. Okay. <clears throat> so it's very simple. It's very fast. We like simple and fast, especially on the weeknight. Um, and it's incredibly yummy and it will introduce you to leeks if you have never had them. All right. It was kind of one of those recipes that I, where I kind of came home and went, oh, dinner. Oh, what do I have? And so this, this came out of, it was one of my, my kind of 10 minute, what do I have? Let's make something dinners. So you're going to start off with a tablespoon of oil, be that coconut or avocado is typically what we use. And we're going to melt that in a large skillet okay and then we're gonna get ourselves some bacon and this is uh if you're in america and have access to a trader joe's this is one of those recipes where the trader joe's bacon ends and pieces comes in particularly handy because you're going to chop the bacon up so it's not it doesn't need to look beautiful you don't need beautiful bacon you can get or actually any butcher will probably give you sell you bacon ends or pieces you know the cast off bits for cheaper than actual bacon So this is a great recipe for that because you're just going to chop it up and you won't see it anyway. So you're going to get your bacon and you're going to chop it if it's not already. And you're going to um, brown it, lightly brown it for three minutes in your 
oil that you've heated in a large skillet. And then you're going to reduce the heat to low. Once your bacon is brown, you're going to reduce the heat to low. And then you're going to get all of your leeks, which you have trimmed, i.e. chopped the root off, and thinly sliced crossways, so across the the rings. Okay. So you thinly slice them. You're going to toss them in on top. Can I say toss in a hot pan? Yes. Does the lawyer like that? Okay. You can't say So we're going to toss them in on top of the bacon. We're going to season them with sea salt and ground black pepper. And we're going to saute the whole lot until the leeks are tender. And that's about 15 minutes. They don't need a lot of babysitting. So just stir them occasionally. But you have to have the heat on low. Leeks do have a tendency, like onion, to brown because of the 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 small amount of sugars in there. They do brown. So you do want the heat low mm-hmm. so that you're cooking the ne- the leeks, not grilling the leeks, as it were. Mm-hmm. So you don't want them brown. Okay. So cook them for about 15 minutes over low heat, stirring occasionally. If the leeks do start to brown, the heat's too high. Okay. So the, the leeks should literally mm-hmm. – melt into soft strips so when you cut them they're they're hard firm pieces Mm -hmm. and they should literally just melt into soft strips that look like pale green noodles if they start to brown it's not enough just to turn the heat down you need to take the pan off the heat just pick the pan up off the heat that that's so you don't want to it's a mistake to just turn the turn the heat down because there's still heat going so when once stuff has started to brown, it's not going to stop until you get the heat removed, reduced. So take the pan off. Just for a minute yeah. until the, the burner yeah. cools down and the pan cools down. Then right. turn the heat down, put the pan back on. Right. Okay. Um, then while that's happening, in a small dish, you're going to get some konjac flour or glucomannan powder. And you're going to mix, rapidly whisk that together with some chicken stock to make us what we call a slurry, which is like a, a little thin paste. Mm-hmm. Then once your leeks are, <clears throat> are soft, you're going to stir that slurry into the sautéed bacon and leeks. And you're going to continue to stir until the mixture thickens, which with konjac flour is going to take a couple of minutes. And that's a good thing um, because you have far less accidents thickening with konjac because it's actually it's slower. So you, it's not this kind of mad, crazy turn it in and suddenly you've got lumps. So you stir the slurry in, continue stirring until it thickens. Once the mixture is thickened, you remove the pan from the heat turn it into your casserole or baking dish. You sprinkle the whole lot with grated cheese and broil, or as we would in England, grill until the top is bubbling and golden, which will take about three minutes. Three total minutes. Now is that metric time? No, 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 no. Just the, 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 the bubbling and golden piece. Okay. Bubbling and golden will take about three minutes and that's, that's imperial minutes or is that metric minutes? That's, um, imperial minutes okay all right just checking uh all right and then so is that it's essentially like dig in now you're done and then well i suggest you remove it from under the broiler don't that's a good forget point. your oven mitts that's a good don't point don't forget your oven mitts because that dish will be very hot and then scoop some out onto a plate and add a pile of Oh, an exciting salad or some exciting lettuces or some other vegetable or not if you don't want to eat vegetables because there's already some in there and and eat it. And it's just, it's lovely. All right. <clears throat> so it's also very good cold the next day or reheated the next day. Okay. So and th- it's very simple and it's very fast and it's incredibly delicious. All right, that was pretty quick and easy, right? Not a whole yep. lot of not a whole lot of effort involved. Um, yep. All right, so the bottom line is leeks are very keto, and they're they're very versatile, and they're not going to be fighting with the rest of your food to take over the flavor profile. Right. They're very complementary. Yes, and they look like noodles. I th- I'm beginning to think I understand why you like them so much, because they're 
you're you could be welsh you're very so you know the, the dishes of tagliatelle there's recipes all over the place with tagliatelle where it where it's essentially you know a, a plate of of, of noodles with you know and mushrooms or you know whatever and, mm-hmm. and, a, and a creamy sauce and whatever. A you can do that with leeks mm-hmm. and actually it is just like the experience is just like eating a big bowl of of um of tagliatelle yeah it is it just really is i just i i'll i'll have to post some pictures because i have some pictures of some um noodly made with leeks things that I made and they looked just like and they tasted amazing and nobody was any the wiser and everybody was very happy. They're the anti-noodles is what Mm -hmm. you're saying. All right. Uh, Okay. So there you go. So you know what, you know what that means? It's Motivation Monday time. And what's our Motivation Monday saying for today? It is as follows. There's no need to be perfect to inspire others. Let people get inspired by how you deal with your own imperfections. Okay. I think this is super important because there is no such thing as perfection. And you don't have to worry about pretending like you got all your stuff together all the time. And you can easily inspire someone because I can guarantee you As soon as you become real and authentic and people realize that you're just as screwed up as they are, but you handle it, they're going to appreciate that even more. So again, it's about authenticity. It's about being real and it's about, you know, showing the world that you can deal with it without having to curl up into a ball. So that's, that uh, is something I think everyone should be really, really thinking about constantly. It's just how authentic are you and how you deal with everyone. And letting people realize, letting people understand who you are and how you deal with the things that life throws at you, because nobody's got it easy. Everyone's got their own stuff. So that's my say. That's my take on it. What's your take? I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you one more time, so you have, so you, so you, you're clear. There's no need to be perfect to inspire others. Let people get inspired by how you deal with your own imperfections. One of the on my my blog, carriebrown.com, I share there's food and travel and photography and cats and all sorts of things over there. But one of the, the, the posts that have always garnered the most comments, reactions, interactions have have been the ones where I've kind of said, I'm broken. Yeah. I'm I have bipolar two disorder. This is how it is for me some days. Um, this is how I deal with that. Um, I, or I, you know, I've str- in my in my past as, as as a lot 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 of you have. You know, I've struggled with my way. I couldn't figure out how to make it work, which is how I ended up here anyway. Those have been the the, the posts where I talk about my brokenness are the ones that. From the re- from the from the feedback I've gotten are the ones that inspire and motivate and help more people than the ones where it's just like la la isn't life fabulous I did this I did that it's the it's the ones where I talk about my brokenness which help the most and uh, the the reason I'm saying that is is as Brian says don't hide embrace your brokenness. Because that's where the learning is for other people. It's for other people get inspired not by somebody being perfect. They get inspired by somebody broken who is surviving and thriving despite the bro excuse me, despite the brokenness. That's what inspires people. It because it, it you come away thinking, there's hope for me. I can do that. This is possible. It opens up the art of of what's possible for you if you look at how someone else who had maybe a similar struggle handled that and and thrived as a result. Uh, right. And so again, it's it's not about trying to present to the world that you've got all your stuff together. I mean, and you may very well have all your stuff together. You may you, you, all of your ducks may be in a row, and that's fantastic. 
you know, um, just be authentic about what's real and what's not. And that, and that goes a long way, uh, with helping people understand who you are. And, and if you're actually caring about wanting to inspire people, that goes a long way to help get people inspired because that matters. You know, realizing that this is a real person dealing with real problems and they're not letting those problems beat them. And therefore I can do the same thing that matters that, that helps. So that's our takeaway. That's our motivation Monday for this week. And so I want you to think about that as you're, as you go along uh, throughout the week is be authentic with, with your interact in your interactions with people. You know, don't try to pretend that you're someone else. Don't try to put on airs and don't try to pretend like, you know, you've got to, all together if it, if you don't but that also does not mean that you can use the the stuff that's going on as an excuse carrie's very very clear about this too when she's talking about writing about experiences that she's had she's just being honest but she doesn't let those things dictate her um her interactions with people it's not an excuse or a crutch those are real things that she's dealing with or she has dealt with but it's not a matter of an ex- using those as an excuse. She would be the last person on, on earth to say, oh, but that because of this, I can't do X, Y, or Z. That's not the case. She's just telling you, today sucked, or this week sucked, and I got through it, and you can too. Right? It's not a matter it's, of... It's also not an excuse for poor behavior. Oh, right. That's true too. It's not an excuse for, you know, I have bipolar, so when I behave badly, that's okay. Right. It's it's not yeah. Yeah, being, being on, broken isn't an excuse for poor behavior. It's it's just uh no. Right. So being authentic doesn't mean you it's carte blanche to to treat others badly. It just means that nope. you are recognizing the truth of who you are, where you are in this particular set, you know, in this particular point in your life and, you know, you're going to do something to get through it and that's just all there is to it. All right, because so, you're awesome, no matter the the bits of you that don't work the way others do, or, or bits of your brain that don't work like others do, or you know whatever your challenges are, you as a person, you as a human, you're still awesome, and you know so you'd never forget that. Right, you're awesome. So act awesome, be awesome, and authenticity is awesome. So be authentic. All right, so. That is our Motivation Monday for today. So think about it this week. All right. So there we go. This is all about leeks today. So you, we even included a, a special leek recipe and all kinds of things that you can do with leeks. So if you've never tried it, you're not even sure if you'd like it, give it a shot. Because who knows? You might actually like a vegetable. I can't explain why, but you might actually like a vegetable. So there. So what's the parting shot there, Carrie Brown? Eat leeks. Eat leeks. There you go. All right. Well, leeks uh, are wonderful. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. Eat leeks at least once. You don't have to love them, but at least try them. Just try, try them so you know. Right. So yes, if yeah. you so if you try them and you love them, let us know. If you try them and you don't love them, keep it to yourself. That's <laughs> that's the rule. All right. So uh, okay, I guess that's it. I guess until next week, I'll talk to you. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, that's another trip to the kitchen done. Go to the grocery store, find yourself some leeks, buy them, chop them up, cook them. See if you like them. And if you do, let Carrie know. She'll be very, very happy to hear it. You can find us on the Facebooks and the Twitters and the Instagrams. We have a group called Keto Evangelist Kitchen. Twitter is Keto Van Kitchen. Instagram is Keto Evangelist Kitchen. And, uh, you know, connect with us there. Let us know what's going on. And Carrie will continue to publish her awesomeness. You can also give us a rating and review on iTunes. Tell the world how awesome Carrie is. Because she is. Oh, and speaking of awesome, so are you. And until next time, keep being awesome.
powered by ketones.